Hello there. In the last few sessions, now we have got an overview of S3. So let's start with creating a bucket and uploading a sample file in that bucket. So open your console, go to services, you'll find that under storage, you've got first service as S3. Click over there. And when you are using it for the first time, you might find this page blank without any bucket. There will be something like get started with the bucket and all. So ultimately you have to create a bucket. So click on create bucket. Give, now give a globally unique name. So here I'll write, so if you do some error, it will keep on showing you. Let me write a name of a bucket, Adioda bucket. Let's see if it is unique. Next thing is, you will select region. You can find all the regions available here. Normally you would like to have your region as close to you as possible or maybe as close to your users as possible. So here we will select Asia Pacific Mumbai. Now this one is especially when you have got existing bucket, you don't want to apply all the settings once again. So you can just copy the setting from the existing bucket. We are going to have our own setting. So we can leave it blank. Let's go to next. Now here you can see primary properties of your bucket like versioning, server access logging, tags, object level logging. If you want to enable them, just click there and enable your properties and then save it. So this is enabled. All of others are disabled right now. However, we'll come to these properties one by one. So for now, I'm not going to enable it. So we'll keep everything as default in a disabled mode. Now go to next. Now here you can give that who will have what kind of access permission. So as you can see, for the owner, there's a read permission, write permission, and then you've got something called object permission. So there is a difference. What is the difference between object permission and objects? So here, so here under objects head, it says, can you read the object or can you write the object? That means here, owner can read the object and owner can write the object. But what about the permission which are given to object? So can the owner read the permissions which is given to the object, that means your files, or can he change the file permissions or object permission or not? So that is driven by here, read and write. So this is very important. Now here if I just give objects read write, that means owner can read the object and he can change the object. However, he won't be able to see that what are the permission given to the object and he won't be able to change the permission given to the object. So normally owner would have every kind of permission, you can however change it. Access for other AWS account. If you want this particular bucket to be accessed by someone having his own AWS account, which is called cross account access, then you can add account, give account ID of the other account, and then give what kind of access you want to give him. Now about public permission, do you want to grant public read access to this bucket or you don't want to give that? So normally you won't be giving access to everyone. So we'll keep it do not grant public read access to this bucket. Now when you enable logging, basically logs are created in your S3. So do you want to give permission to those S3 log delivery groups to create a log file in your bucket or not? This is what you are providing by here, manage system permission. So for now, I'm not going to grant Amazon S3 delivery group with access to this bucket. Next, this is just to review all the settings. If you're satisfied with what you have, then you can go and create the bucket. Now you can see Adioda bucket has been created. You can just select this bucket and all your properties will come from here. Remember, I didn't click on this link. I just click on somewhere on this line of the bucket. So you can see the properties, the permission that you have given, the management properties that you have applied. Let's go inside the bucket. Click on the bucket. Right now it is empty, so there is no object in it. If you want to upload a file, you can go and click on upload. If you want to create a folder, you can create a folder here. Let's directly first upload a file. So upload a file, select the file from your system and open it. Now you can directly upload it. In that case, it will have all the default properties or you can go and set the permission and the properties by clicking on the next button. So let's go and select the next button. Now this looks similar to the permission given to bucket. However, the major difference here is that these permissions are would be applicable on the files, not on the bucket. So again, what kind of permission owner would have on this particular file? Do you want to give cross account access to another account? So we'll keep everything default for now. And now this is very different from your bucket properties. So here, remember we talked about the storage class. So here you can select what kind of storage class you want to select. 
standard standard IA Manjan IA reduced redundancy. So you won't be able to see Glacier here. If you want to upload your file directly on Glacier, then go to Glacier services, create a vault and then upload your file there. However, you can use lifecycle management rule to internally transfer your file from these storage classes to Glacier. So I'll select a standard and do you want to encrypt your file? For now I'm not going to encrypt it. If I want to encrypt it, there are two options here itself using Amazon S3 master key and KMS master key. We'll talk about this a bit later. Then you can select what kind of metadata you want to associate with this particular file. So for example, what is the content type? In the content type, mine is just a text file. So I can just go here, scroll it down and get text pane. You can also associate a tag, which means you can give something like who is the owner of this particular file. I can give here owner is Ashish. And by the way, you need to save this. So save the metadata and save the tag. You can give multiple tags here as well as multiple metadata you can associate with the file. For now, let's go ahead. You can review it again. If you want to change anything, you can go to previous and change it. Otherwise, just upload it. So here you go. You can see operations, zero in progress, one success, zero error. And you can see your file here. Now again, you can click somewhere here on the line and you'll find the properties of the file. If you want to download, you can directly click on here. There are other windows from where you can download it. You can use copy path and select from. We'll come to that later. You can have overview, properties, permissions. All these things you can see from this window itself. Or you can just click on this and you can see the properties etc. from here as well. So you can see the storage class. Each object that you upload gets an e tag which is unique with respect to this file. We use it when you want to access it programmatically. This is the owner. And then you can use all these actions on your file. Open, download, download as, make public, copy path. And also, when you upload a file on S3, you get a link here. Whether it will work for me or not will depend on whether you have granted me access or not. So if I just click on this, you'll get access denied. Because remember, you have not made it public. You can go to the properties and find out storage class encryption metadata tag and you can change all these things. You can go to the permissions tab and you can see what kind of access you have given to whom. Now select from is an interesting thing where you can run queries directly on the files kept in S3. Since it's a just a text file, so we would have our options limited. But if it is suppose something like a database dump file or something, then we can run the queries directly on this file itself. If you want to go to the back to the bucket, you can just click on Amazon S3 and now we are back to all the list of the buckets. We can go to Adiota bucket and we can create a folder here. You can give it a name, my files. You can apply encryption at the folder level as well. I'm not going to use that. Now what if you have to move this file inside the folder? You can just select the file, cross it, go to more. You can do cut here, go inside the folder and you can paste it here. As simple as that. So you've got only a folder now, within that you've got file1.txt. Now before we wrap up this, let's understand the difference here between the folders and files. Now technically speaking, there is nothing like folder in an S3 bucket. So S3 has a flat hierarchy, which means all the files are stored at the same level, whether it is just in the bucket or whether it is inside a directory. Folder here is just for making it more user friendly and logically grouping the files together. When I moved file1.txt from this level to inside my files, only thing is I have changed is that now my files have got my files slash file1.txt. File1.txt has effectively been renamed as folder name slash file1.txt. This is the reason why a lot of times we call folders as a, just a prefix. So what all we have seen? We have created a bucket. We have assigned it normal properties. I have not gone into details of properties as of, as of yet. We uploaded a file and we saw that how to set the properties of the files. And then we have seen that how to browse that. So once more, just browse all these options that you get along with your bucket. You can see the properties of your files just by clicking there. And you can move very easily from inside to outside of your bucket and files. 
So that's all in this lecture. We'll explore the properties of buckets and properties of files in detail in the next few videos. So see you soon in the next video.